Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Fen Talks podcast. On today's episode, we're fe- featuring Mr. Jared Marshall. He is one of our firm directors in the Trust and Estates Practice Group. And we're doing a deep dive on the difference between a will and a trust. You know, this is such an important topic, especially coming out of a year of COVID. There were so many individuals that really started to think about, do I need a will or do I need a trust? And so I would love to just start with the question of what's the difference between a will and a trust? So the difference between a will and a trust is that they handle um, your assets in different ways. A will is a very basic document. And if you pass away, the will will control how your assets are. Uh, distributed amongst your family members or heirs. The issue with that, though, is in order for that to actually happen, in order for those assets to move from you to your heirs, you have to go through a complicated legal process called probate. And probates take a very long time, and they cost quite a bit of money, and they involve judges and lawyers, and it's something most people want to avoid. And the primary way to avoid that is to create a trust. And what a trust is, is it's essentially a bucket you create while you're alive that you transfer your assets into. And then you can spend them out of there, or add more to it during your life. But when you die, instead of going to probate, a third party is appointed that will then hand out the assets according to whatever your dictates are in the trust. So Jared, for those individuals that are not necessarily familiar with our legal jargon, what is, what does probate mean? Well, like I alluded to probate is a, complicated legal process where all of your assets get put in front of a court and, you know, through series of rules and um, complicated processes, creditors get paid, notice goes out to heirs, um, assets are inventoried, they're appraised, and then eventually after, and when I say a long time, it's a years long process, um, they get handed out to your heirs. So the other trend that we saw is, I mean, obviously a lot of inquiries did come in over the course of the last year, but the one question that we had is, you know, what's the right age in which a will or a trust should be established? So I would love to get your thoughts on this. Well, you're never too young to die. So an estate plan is never a bad idea, but I feel like that question comes into play a lot when people are concerned about whether or not they have enough stuff to merit an estate plan in it misunderstands a large part of what estate planning does. So keep in mind, or people need to keep in mind, that an estate plan is more than a will and a trust, or a will or a trust. It involves things like powers of attorney or advanced healthcare directives. And the name of those documents change based on what state you're in. But by and large, they a good estate plan will control every aspect of your life if you are unable to make decisions for yourself, either because you're dead or you're incapacitated. So for instance, I may not have a lot of stuff, um, but I may have kids and I may wanna have something in an estate plan that says who I want to raise my kids if I die or become incapacitated. Or I may have strong feelings about who I want to take care of me if I have a traumatic brain injury and can't take care of myself anymore. All of those issues can be resolved through good estate planning. So even if people are concerned about not having enough stuff to really merit an estate plan, it's still worth talking to someone about. And I wanted to ask one more clarifying question. So do individuals have the ability to change their trust over time? Absolutely. Uh, Your will can be changed up until the moment of your death. Your trust in most instances, almost all instances can be as well. And if you can't change it, it's because you made a choice to basically surrender your right to change it. The default is you can always change your trust. So Jared, we've done a little bit more of a deep dive on what those specific topics are and what it relates to, um, you know, what individuals need to look at and the differences between a trust and a state. This is kind of a unique area of practice and law. So I'm curious, would you mind just sharing a little bit more about your background and how you got into this niche market? Um, Well, I never intended to get into Uh, trust and estates work. Actually, I um, showed up at a previous firm and I was an associate and, you know, I was just trying to get as much experience as possible. And uh, a partner came in and said, Hey, uh, I hear you want to try cases. 
And I said, yeah, that's right. And he handed me a file and said, okay, go trial starts in two weeks. Um, and that happened to be a trust and estates case. So I got obviously very immersed in the law and just discovered I really liked it. And the rest is history. I know trust and estates, you can work with so many different types of people um, out there in the business community, but is there a specific group of individuals that you feel like you can help the most? Well, like I said, estate planning helps um, everybody. Everybody can use an estate plan. Personally, I handle um, more contested matters. I'm a litigator for the most part. So if you've got a family that's going to involve fighting or there is already fighting after someone passes away or gets sick, then people are more likely to come to me. Um, if you have you know, a very high value estate that's going to involve a lot of complex tax issues, then there are other attorneys that specialize in that kind of tax intensive planning. So even within this very niche market, as you said, there are specialties even within it. And, you know, fortunately at a firm like this, you know, we've got experts in every one of those fields. So kind of regardless of what your circumstance is, we've got the right person to help you. Yeah, I think that is one of the added benefits of working with a larger trust and estates practice group um, at a firm like Fenimore Dowling Aaron. So I'm curious, you know, one question that does come up, you know, a lot of people know attorneys, they have friends, they have family members, um, but they may not live in the same state as them. So is there any benefit to having an attorney that lives in the same state or in the same community as what you do? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, part of that is just the fact that in this country, states vary, laws vary from state to state. So uh, particularly when it comes to things like death taxes or uh, things of that nature, one state's rules can be very different from another state's rules. Um, it, there's often some confusion about that. And the reason you may be hearing that question is because all of the states are subject to the same rules for federal tax. And so theoretically, someone could say, yeah, I can do your state plan because I know about federal tax. Well, that may be true, but you may be completely unaware of some local or state taxes that are also going to be impacted by the estate plan. So you wanna make sure you have someone in the same state and someone that really knows the ins and outs of estate planning. We talked a little bit about, you know, what individuals would look for when it comes to qualifying an attorney. Um, having someone in state or in the community certainly helps. But for those individuals that are ready to get started, they don't have anything done to date, but they're ready to take the next step forward. What would you describe that process to look like? What would be your suggestions on next steps? Well, I mean, the first step is always contact an attorney. You know, I really don't recommend using services like LegalZoom or, you know, going to some store. I think they used to sell them at Kinko's um, where you can buy form documents. Um, if that's all you can do, if that's, you know, the limit of what your resources are, then it, it's probably better than nothing. But it, more often than not, it's going to cause problems down the road. Those documents and services don't really customize their documents enough and they don't change them enough with laws because laws change all the time. So what I would look for or tell people to look for is any attorney or firm that has a dedicated specialized uh, estate planning practice. If you can find a firm that has an estate planning practice, uh, give them a call and hopefully they will have someone that can Make a plan that's right for you at the right cost. Um, don't call a uh, firm that you look up online that specializes in personal injury law. If you have a friend that does criminal defense, probably not the best bet for your estate plan. Yeah, just as much as you know, we like to interview our clients, they also need to interview us at the exact same time. So right. there are a number of resources out there, the State Bar Association being one of them that individuals can look up, some of those qualifying attorneys on. Are there any other resources that you would encourage listeners to look at when they're exploring qualified attorneys? Well, you know, the State Bar referral panels are always a good option. Um, you can actually look up with the... Um, or strike that bar association referral panels are always a good option. You can also look up um, sections of the state bar where they list uh, trust and estate practitioners, at least here in California. Um, for the most part though, quite frankly, reputation in the community is going to always be a deciding factor. If you um, are a business owner 
and you have lots of assets, but they're tied up in entities, there's going to be a number of attorneys who other people you know in that community work with. And it is important to talk to them um, and say, you know, who did you use? Did you like them? And then like you pointed out, you're still going to need to go and interview that attorney or that firm to see if they're a good fit for you. Just because your friend really liked attorney X doesn't mean you're going to like them or that they're going to like you. Absolutely. So as we look to wrap up today's conversation, Jared, is there any other topics that commonly come up in conversations when you're talking with individuals about trust and estates? You know, I think that by and large, the biggest concern is one that we already touched on a bit, which is just because you're making this plan doesn't mean necessarily that you're stuck with it or that you lose control of your assets. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about what happens to your stuff once you create an estate plan. Um, by and large, all of those things are false. A lot of them are created by movies. Here in California, you know, there's all sorts of movies that involve, you know, the reading of the will and people are very nervous about well, what happens when my will gets read. Well, that doesn't happen. That's a movie thing. Um, so if you have any questions at all, you have any concerns about the process or what's going to happen after you die or get sick, just go talk to an attorney. Most attorneys will do an initial consultation for free or a discounted rate. And the reality is you're going to die. There's no way around it. So you need to prepare for it one way or the other. You might as well get started. Jared, I appreciate you taking some time to further explain the trust and estates process. Uh, for those individuals that are interested in connecting with you, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, you can give me a call here at the office, 559-432-4500. Um, I'm also always accessible by email, jmarshall at fenimorelaw.com. Awesome. Jared's bio is also listed on our firm website if you're interested in exploring a little bit more about his background as well as the rest of our practice groups. So Jared, appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.